Um, hi, my name is Melissa. I am uh, currently a student at School of the Art Institute of Chicago, and I'm in the Film, Video, New Media Department. And today I'm going to talk to you about my project where I hacked the Oregon Trail and changed all the text to leet, uh, chat speak, and low cat grammar. And um, I know that I'm not your typical Apple II user. I was born nine years after the first Apple II was released. Um, my first experience with the Apple II was in the early 90s, playing it in elementary school during you know, math class or science class. Every couple of weeks, they would let us go out and play games and learn how to type on it. And uh, you know, one thing that everyone looked forward to was playing the Oregon Trail. And um, I remember at the time that I was really interested in the Apple II, but I had such limited access to it, I wasn't allowed to do much else with it. And I didn't have a computer at home either. So um, it was just until recently when I had the opportunity to work with the Apple II again is when I decided to you know, replay it and enjoy it and learn more about it. Like I've never had that when, now that I had the opportunity to do it when I couldn't before. Um, so I'm going to first show the game. Okay, I'll restart it so you can see the beginning of it. Um, for those that you don't know, for those that don't know, the Oregon Trail is an educational computer game where you go on an adventure to Oregon Trail and you learn about, you know, the trials and the problems that people had and all that. And um, first, I'll tell you about how to play the game and stuff for those that don't know. Um, you can select, you know, to learn about the trail or, you know, see Oregon Top Ten, but, you know, we always just want to go to the first one and travel the trail. And then it gives you selections. You can be a banker, carpenter, or a farmer. I usually choose banker because, you know, that's the best one. You get the most money, although you do get uh, less points in the end. And then you have to type in your name. Usually people use profanity, but I'll just use my name. And then you also type in your friends names so because you know in the end they all get diseases and die so yes are these names correct and it's like yes so then it asks you where you want to uh when you want to leave I, I just usually choose March, because it's the first one, so. And then you have to go buy your supplies before you leave Independence. I have $1,600, so. I can buy what I need at Matt's General Store. Hi, BB. I'm Matt. That's the guy right there. And tell me if I'm going too fast, if you want to try to read some of this, but... And here you get to select, you know, your oxen and food and clothing. I've played this game so many times I know exactly what I want and can usually play this game without looking. Mm -hmm. <laughs> 
imagine an entire classroom full of that music. <laughs> so then here, you can have a number of choices. You can change, you continue on the trail, or you can check your supplies. You can change pace or your food rations. You can talk to people. Everything in here has been changed. Oh, yes, of course. Can't do it any other way. One of the oxen dies, lol. No, we don't have to look. So. so then it tells me I have to cross the river. And, you know, you always have to ford the river. <laughs> oh, wow. Sorry, guys. <laughs> Eric has measles. Try to repair it. Uh, it took me several months to get used to it. I mean, I... Oh, no. <laughs> like, sometimes I still have problems reading it, but... I'm going to die soon. Would I like to look around? I lost 
the game. So. <laughs> so. So yeah. Um, so yeah, the, uh, there was my game. You know, I changed all the text to lead. I don't know. It was probably difficult to lead to read. Um, I decided to choose this game because it was the first game that you know I ever played on the Apple II, and uh, it was my first experience using computers. So then when I finally got the chance to revisit the Apple II, I felt like it was appropriate to begin again with the Oregon Trail, and. Um, and I decided to change it all to lead because at first I thought it would just be funny to play Oregon Trail lead version. And uh, I really love lead. It's, I think it's beautiful when, you know, reading it and just the aesthetic of, aesthetics of it. And, um, and, you know, also the fact that I'm taking an educational game and, you know, making it difficult to decipher and a million times harder to play kind of defeats the purpose of the educational game. Um, but yeah, this game mainly uh, marks the starting point of learning more about the Apple II. And, uh, and I realized that after, work, after doing this that, um, that I had the opportunity to do this. And uh, I got really excited about that, to finally be able to work with the Apple II in a way I was never able to. And um, I can show you real quick how I did it. Um, basically, I opened up the disk image that I downloaded online and opened it up into a basic text editor. And you can see here that uh, it's just a bunch of mess, you know, can't even read it. But uh, I went through the entire thing and um, found all the instances of text and changed each individual character by hand, one by one. Let's see if I can find something. Oh, here we go. Yeah. So can you imagine, you know, sitting here for hours on end, changing all of this? <laughs> it was fun, but towards the end, I, I think I went a little crazy. Um, and the reason why I did it this way was because it was the only way that I knew how to do it. I, I had no experience in programming or anything. So um, after doing this, I realized that I wanted to learn how to do this directly onto the Apple II instead of um, through this way. But uh, yeah, so then after I completed this game, I started researching more about the Apple II. And uh, I came across Jason Scott's text files website. Yeah. And uh, I found all these beautiful crack screens, and I wanted to learn how to do it. And um, to assign my game. And uh, I realized it was a lot harder than I thought it was going to be. And so I'm still in the process of you know, learning that. But after finding this website, I found a ton of other information, like uh, manuals and just general information. I found all of his text files about, you know, bulletin board systems and all that. And uh, um, I found an entire Apple II community out there that was willing to help, at least. And uh, I decided to create a blog documenting all of this research that I've been doing. And uh, I find it really awesome that I can that there's still stuff out there about the Apple II, and I was super excited to find this Apple II community. And um, after finding all this information, I realized that working with emulators, which is what I was doing when I created the Oregon Trail game, was really limiting, because all like the manuals and the documentation were about the actual hardware. So then I decided to you know, get actual hardware you know, found it on eBay, and um, and right now I'm just kind of like messing around with it, trying to learn about it, and I feel like it's a uh, a much better experience working with the actual hardware. It's easier to work with things and 
you know, emulators. It's fine, but you know, it's not as cool as having the actual thing right in front of you. And um, and as you can see, I even managed to get my game onto a floppy disk, which makes it a million times better. And I don't know, it seems like a a more fun experience when you can actually play it on the Apple II. And um, yeah, um, eventually, you know, I want to make some more projects. I want to learn more about it. I want to hack it and see what I can do. I want to learn how to program. I want to make more games. And um, I found some awesome software called Take One, where you can create your own animations using stills from games. So I would kind of like to work with that. And uh, most important part is if you want to play the Oregon Trail yourself, you can find it on my website. You can download it. And I have links to emulators and stuff that you can play it there. And um, I also have the game on floppy disk if you want to buy one. And uh, <laughs> So yeah, um, here's a here's my link if you're you want to you know download it. So yeah, that's it for me. Does anyone have any questions? Okay. Oh yeah, definitely. I had to make sure to keep the same amount of characters. So that's why you'd, you'd see random spaces instead of characters just like I found out that you know if I had too many characters or too less the game would break or either glitch out and wouldn't work so yeah I definitely had that problem where I'd get you know a huge chunk change and then realize something got messed up and then I would have to redo it so. um, I think it was like an so. <laughs> uh, several months several months Right here. Yeah, um, two quick questions. Um, if you had to do this again, um, what would you have done differently? And do you plan on doing this with more sort of Apple II games or text adventures? Um, I do want to do more with it. I guess I don't know how else I would do it differently. If you have suggestions, you know. But uh, I mean, it was a lot of work, but I had a lot of fun doing it. So, yeah. But I do have plans to do work with more Apple II games and yeah. Yeah, I've I've looked at it with hex editors, but I guess I I don't really know hex, so I with yeah. Well, yeah, when I've opened it up in hex editors, it's usually the same uh, mess here. Like, so, yeah. At least in the hex editors that I use, maybe there's something better out there. But. Yeah. John. On the topic of hex editors, uh, have you done any any work with those? <laughs> yeah, actually I have. Um, I I found this hex editor and I changed all the text within the hex editor to hex. Oops. Where did it go? Here we go. So that I can actually open it up. I have to mirror my display here so you can see it. But. So yeah, here you can see hex beam. <laughs> this was a little bit easier to do.
um, my memory's getting a little hazy, but I think Oregon Trail was originally written in BASIC. It, it may have been. It was written in BASIC, oh, yeah. Okay. So um, if you could find the source code, would that be a preferable way to change the, the strings on the program? Oh, yeah, I think so. Because then you could vary the lengths and... and what? You could, you could vary the lengths of the strings then and not mm -hmm. have to embed the spaces. Yeah, it's like just at that time, I didn't know how to program in BASIC. Okay. So this is, it was the only way I knew how to do it. Right. Thank you. Yeah. I think he had a question back here. Oh, yeah, right there. <laughs> um, how did you... Um, put the game onto the floppy disk was, did you have to get a special drive to write this um, so they could read? Yeah, I used, there's this software called ADT Pro for the Apple II, that um, Apple disk transfer. And uh, what I had to do was the Apple II, I used the Apple II C to do it. I used, it has a, a modem in the back and I took a null modem cable that to a serial and then hooked the serial up to USB. And I used the ADT program to transfer the game directly from my Mac to the floppy disk and within minutes it was on there. So yeah. The eight and a quarter, yeah. Or the five and a quarter, yeah. What's that? Yeah. I use the five and a, or the eight and a quarter ones, or now I'm the yeah. They are uh, five and a quarter inch Apple two floppy disks or 140k. Yeah. <laughs> Have you told uh, other Apple users online about your uh, creations? Yeah, I have. Uh, most of most of them were confused by it. I didn't really know how to explain it. So, I mean, when I would ask them questions about how to do crack screens and stuff, um, they were just kind of confused. But I don't know, they didn't really tell me directly whether they liked it or not. So, yeah. uh, my question is, uh, if you were to do this and, and take it further, what ideas do you think you would take to alter the graphics to make them also leet? Um, well, I guess I had originally wanted to change the imagery as well, but that was like way beyond, when I was making that was way beyond my knowledge. I mean, I, I would eventually love to learn how to program in BASIC and change. Well, right, but forgetting how, the how, of, what would you actually like to do with the graphics if you, if you could do anything you wanted? Um, I guess it would be funny if I had some bullcats in there or something or, uh, <laughs> change the title of the game or put in my own crack screen kind of a thing. Signature page. So, yeah. uh, where did you find the five and a quarter inch drive for like OS X that you could use with your laptop or whatever? What's that? Like where did you find the five and a quarter inch drive? The emulator or? Well, I'm assuming, or did you just I used the drive in the Apple II C to, and it transferred the disk through there. Okay. But, yeah, I mean, I downloaded, people have uploaded the disk images online, and you can use them in emulators on the computer, and that's how I worked with them then. Uh, did you try to contact any of the original developers of the game? No, I haven't. I guess that would be a good idea. Yeah. Is that coming from the computer? Oh. I noticed when you were playing the game that the date is 2048. Is that yeah. correct? Yeah. Uh, can, can you talk a little bit about that? Um, it was... It wasn't not any real anything really. I mean, it was just funny to I mean, <laughs> Oregon Trail in the future, <laughs> playing an Apple II version that's in, based in 2048. So I just yeah.
So yeah. Anything else or no? Okay. <laughs> okay, then I'm done.